Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, August 16th, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Let's start today a little bit with Apple security, in particular macOS Ventura, which did introduce a background task manager. The goal with background task manager was to alert the user if a process sort of becomes persistent, basically runs in the background. And the idea behind this is if you have a process that all of a sudden keeps running in the background, there's a little pop-up that alerts you of it. If you just install some new software, well, uh, then you sort of know, okay, I know why this is running. You can discard the warning. The problem is that apparently this particular feature doesn't really work as well as it's supposed to work. And Patrick Wardle, who has uh, had a rich history in finding flaws in macOS and iOS, has presented at DEF CON some of the methods that can be used here. Out of the three different bypass methods that Wardle found, uh, one requires root access. That's still potentially a problem because, well, that's sort of exactly one of the attacks that the background uh, manager is supposed to protect yourself from. But there are two others that do not require a root access and could still bypass any persistence notification by the background task manager. Patrick has been in communication with Apple about sort of the issues with the background task manager. Now, the specific flaws here haven't uh, been disclosed to Apple, but the overall sort of problems that Patrick found, not clear if there will be a patch coming from Apple anytime soon, or maybe something like with the next Mac OS release, which is probably only like uh, two months away. And then more problems for users of Avanti products. This time it's Avanti Avalanche, uh, the enterprise mobile management uh, solution. This product suffers according to a tenable from a pre-authentication stack-based buffer overflow that can lead to arbitrary code execution. In order to exploit the vulnerability, an attacker would see, send a crafted message to TCP port 1777. Lots of additional details about what the exact problem here in Tenable's blog. So plenty to go for to develop an exploit. Uh, update has been released by Ivanti. Avalanche 641 is the version that fixes this particular problem. A security company, Clarati, did uh, reveal some interesting vulnerabilities in the Synology Cloud Quick Connect. Uh, what this is, is if you have a Synology NAS, one of their network accessible storage devices, they may have a access to what they call quick connect which allows you when you're traveling when you're not in your local network to connect to a website that will then establish a connection back to your synology device so overall this sounds a lot like Eston and services like this that basically allow you to establish connectivity to devices behind a nat the interesting part here is the authentication tokens being used and some mishandling of them. For example, an attacker is able to register a second device uh, that uh, is then sort of can be used to impersonate the user's legitimate device. So the user will basically then connect to the wrong device. There are also some issues where authentication tokens can be leaked that can then ultimately lead to an attacker being able to connect to the user's device and also up to execute arbitrary code on the device. Interesting research and uh, actually I think for a developer, if you're developing any schemes like this, an interesting read into some of the pitfalls that you should watch out for. The vulnerabilities themselves are not new. They were actually discovered in 2022 at Pwn to Own Toronto, but now Clarati sort of went ahead and released some of the details. Patches have been available for these problems. 
And the FBI is warning that attackers are tricking users into installing malicious cryptocurrency investment applications by using beta testing applications. This bypasses some of the App Store protections by basically labeling the application as a beta test. Yes, there may be some warnings, but users are then convinced to basically try out this new application and uh, probably also by getting uh, new features. These typically will try to impersonate legitimate cryptocurrency investment applications to make it more likely the user will install them. And then, of course, the goal is to train the victim's cryptocurrency assets. Well, and this is it for today. So thanks for listening. If you like this podcast, uh, please uh, tell your friends about it. I do the podcast because people are listening. So the more people are listening, the more likely I'm going to do it. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.